10 Most Hated Guests on the Joe Rogan Experience Hey everyone, and welcome back to The Screeny. The Joe Rogan Experience put podcasting on the map thanks to its sheer variety of intriguing guests this infamous host faced over the years. Despite its enormous success, this podcast welcomes numerous controversial personalities with open arms. Fans of the show couldn't wait to hear what they had to say, but the general public often didn't feel the same way. Let's take a look at the 10 most hated guests on the Joe Rogan Experience. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel before taking a look at the most questionable individuals Joe Rogan had a chance to interview. Number 10. Alex Jones Joe Rogan came face to face with dozens of notorious personalities on his podcast, but Alex Jones is in a league of his own. The mastermind behind the conspiracy theory and fake news website Infowars stirred more controversies than anyone can count, but it seems his days are numbered. Back in July 2018, YouTube issued a strike against Jones's channel, accusing him of hate speech. All the major social networking platforms quickly followed suit. When you remember some of the crazy claims Jones made during his incoherent rants, it's not hard to see why everyone wanted to distance themselves from Infowars. He accused the government of planning 9-11, describes the moon landing footage as fake, and spread the belief big businesses are trying to create a new world order through inside job terrorist attacks and manufactured economic crises. The list goes on, but you get the point. Some of his fans felt the mainstream media was limiting his freedom of speech by casting him out, but most people agreed that diabolical conspiracy theorist got what he deserved. Number 9. Roseanne Barr this disgraced sitcom star became public enemy number one after one of her racist tweets made the headlines back in May 2018. She made a comment about the physical appearance of Obama's former senior advisor Valerie Jarrett by saying that she looks like the offspring of the Muslim Brotherhood and Planets of the Apes. Many people felt her tweet was racist and extremely offensive, including her bosses. Despite its huge success, ABC executives decided to cancel Rose Roseanne's revival and described the statement of its creator as abhorrent, repugnant, and inconsistent with their values. Barr did all she could to save face, from releasing a public apology to trying to blame her racism on sleeping pills. But it wasn't enough. This tweet completely destroyed Roseanne's career, but it wasn't the first time this Golden Globe winner came under fire. She also received a lot of backlash after doing a photo shoot dressed as Hitler and spreading lies about the Parkland shooting survivor David Hogg. Number 8. Milo Yiannopoulos we witnessed the rise and fall of several far-right commentators in the last few years, but none of them stirred as much controversy as Milo Yiannopoulos. His think pieces for Breitbart put him on the map and made him one of the leading voices of the alt-right. He repeatedly tried to distance himself from this movement, but it was later revealed that he frequently contacted neo-Nazi and white supremacist figures looking for feedback and story ideas while working for Breitbart. Despite his controversial views on religion, feminism, social justice, and political correctness, Yiannopoulos became an extremely influential figure among those who shared his values. They stayed by his side throughout several Twitter controversies, including his attack on the Ghostbusters actress Leslie Jones. He was banned from this website after Twitter bosses came to the conclusion his tweets made her a target and kickstarted a racist harassment campaign. Even those who had his back through all of this weren't quick to defend Yiannopoulos once it turned out he might be a pedophilia apologist. He lost his job and a book deal after saying child sexual abuse isn't that big of a deal. No! What are you ta what are you saying? Number 7, Dan Bilzerian. Dan Bilzerian is a pro poker player who became an internet sensation thanks to his lavish lifestyle. There are 25 millions of followers enjoying watching him shoot guns, party, play poker, fly on private jets, and hang out around half-naked ladies. Bilzerian is the kind of guy who thinks people only hate him because they want to be like him. 
In reality, being rich and famous aren't the only things that transformed him into a loathsome figure. Back in 2017, Belzerian was present at the last Vegas shooting, but many people weren't on board with the way he handled the attack. The Instagram star posted several videos of himself at the scene of the crime, claiming he wanted the whole world to see what it really feels like. He was also caught on camera trying to get a gun so he could face the attacker, but never followed through with his plan. Some of his critics felt his behavior was disgusting and accused him of pretending to be tough in the face of this big tragedy. Number 6. Ben Shapiro Joe Rogan's interview with Ben Shapiro was extremely well received because his views align with the target audience of this podcast. Despite the fact they welcomed him with open arms, liberals often didn't feel the same way about this controversial political commentator. His university lectures stirred controversy on several occasions because some of the students didn't want him spreading his agenda on their campus. The general public sees Ben Shapiro as a polarizing figure, but he's a hero of the young conservative base. He's capable of voicing their beliefs like no other commentator out there because he's well-informed, argumentative, and sharp. That's exactly what makes him dangerous in the eyes of his critics. Nonsense sounds rational coming out of his mouth. Calling for the ethnical cleansing of the Arab population, describing transgender people as mentally ill and denying racial injustice in the US are only some of his brightest moments. His haters know he's wrong, but debating him usually leads to nowhere since his plethora of knowledge makes him an extremely powerful enemy. Number 5. Mel Gibson Mel Gibson appeared on the Joe Rogan Experience to discuss stem cell therapy along with the expert Neil Riordan. Their interview never got into the nitty-gritty stuff he's done, but that doesn't change the fact that Gibson just happens to be one of the most polarizing figures in Hollywood. His career went downhill after his obscenity-filled anti-Semitic meltdown in 2010. All hell broke loose once his ex-wife Oksana Grigorieva filed a restraining order against him and released shocking tapes that showed the world who he really was. Despite her allegations, Gibson was allowed to revive his career a couple years down the road. That's one of the main reasons why people hate him so much. He stands as a constant reminder of Hollywood's hypocrisy. To make the whole thing even worse, he displayed problematic behavior long before his ex accused him of domestic violence. Some of Gibson's past projects, including Braveheart and The Passion of Christ, have been highly criticized and he repeatedly made the headlines with his homophobic and conservative remarks in the past. Number 4. Jordan Peterson Psychologist Jordan Peterson is one of the most frequent guests on the Joe Rogan experience. Fans of this show adore him because he's intelligent, articulate, and opinionated, but not everyone in the world feels the same way. He faced a lot of backlash over the years for basing his arguments on pseudo-facts and conspiracy theories, but Peterson managed to get away with all of it because he seems as someone who knows what he's talking about. Unlike Alex Jones and Tommy Lahren who tries to demonize social justice warriors and snowflakes by screaming their lungs out, Peterson done it in a more subtle way. He brought intellectual armor to the conversation about political correctness, modern masculinity, and climate change in the way other right-wing pundits never could. That's the main reason why his haters see him as a real threat. Despite the facts they disagree with his beliefs, he actually makes a lot of sense. Number 3. John Jones Joe Rogan's ties to the world of UFC are still pretty strong, and numerous fighters accepted invitations to appear on his show over the years. John Jones was one of them. Despite his reputation as one of the greatest fighters of all time, even his biggest fans have to admit that he did a few questionable things in the past. UFC fans came to expect outrageous behavior from their favorite fighters, but Jones took it to a but Jones took it to a whole new level in 2015 when he was involved in a hit and run. To make things even worse, Jones did the unthinkable by fleeing the scene of the crime and leaving an injured, pregnant woman behind. The UFC star also disappointed his fans by repeatedly failing drug tests after using steroids and received several suspensions along the way. Number 2. Ted Nugent Despite his pretty impressive discography, Ted Nugent didn't appear on the Joe Rogan Experience to discuss his career. In addition to being a successful musician, he also happens to be a right-wing activist. That's the side of him fans of the podcast are more fond of, but the general public tends to disagree. 
Nugent received a lot of backlash for spreading his conservative views, mostly relating to hunting and gun control. These topics came up during his interview with Joe Rogan, who also happens to be an avid hunter just like Nugent. The two men weren't on the same page about everything though, since the veteran rock star spent almost half a century promoting anti-drug and an anti-alcohol stance. Despite his many transgressions, Nugent served as a key influence on the straight edge movement, a lifestyle which discourages drugs and alcohol alcohol use. Even though they liked his stance on guns and hunting, fans of the podcast felt his point of view regarding recreational drugs was pretty lame. Number 1. Gavin McKinney's the media company Vice has been receiving a lot of criticism from the very start, along with his co-founder, Gavin McKinney's. It earns the reputation as a magazine that spreads gonzo journalism for the YouTube generation thanks to its taste for provocative content. McKinney's didn't only gain haters thanks to popularizing clickbait journalism during his days at Vice, he made many questionable choices once he left it behind. He came under fire after starting a sexist far-right organization, Proud Boys, which has been described described as an extremist group with ties to white nationalism by the FBI. McKinney's displayed chauvinist beliefs long before Proud Boys came into the picture and has never tried to hide his disdain for feminism. He's been often accused of anti-Semitism and white nationalism and didn't do a good job of distancing himself from this cause. McKinney's even went on the record saying he has a lot of Nazi friends and members of his violent group were often seen attending racist rallies and events across the US. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more amazing content, and don't forget to check out one of the other two videos on your screen.